couple quick things about parking and drives. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's going to be a couple different uh, parking space sizes uh, that will show up. Uh, sometimes it might be as uh, small as 18 by 8 foot 6. I don't think it'll go down to 8 foot, but uh, might. Um, 19 by 9, I just sort of use as kind of a generic. It, it'll get you in the ballpark no matter what. Um, uh, um, the center line versus rectangles there, by the way, is about uh, what I talked about earlier about um, being able to, to draw the uh, driveways. Find the system that works for you, whether you're thinking about it as center lines or, or uh, rectangles. Very nicely, the driveways um, uh, heal themselves. So you just do a couple different angles and all the curves get done in for you. Uh, back in my day, we had to do that with circle templates and all kinds of crazy things. Um, but so, okay, if I have a, a parking space that's 19 by nine or nine by 19 <clears throat> and something says you need uh, 20 cars, well, how big is the parking lot? Well, that may sound sort of um, like, oh my God, how big is the parking lot? It's actually dead simple, right? If I have uh, uh, 20 cars, uh, I split that in half, so I have 10 and 10, uh, and the space is going to be 19, and I'm going to have 19 on the other end, uh, and then I've got a, say, 24-foot drive aisle. That means that this thing is 62 feet wide. So if you're drawing it at 60 feet wide or 64 feet wide, something in that range, you're going to be fine. But if you're drawing it at 50 feet wide or 42 feet wide, that's not going to work. And the computer will understand that that's not a reasonable uh, amount of space for two uh, lines of parking. Um, and then how long is it the other way? Well, if I have 10 and they're each uh, nine, that means this thing is 90 feet. And I've got 10 spaces. Right? So you can do that in a couple seconds and know that 20 parking spaces, uh, the, the sort of classic simple shape box that I'm looking for is something that is, in this case, uh, 62 by 90. Right? And you can draw that in in sketch mode and see if it fits right off the bat. Um, so this is one of those things. Know your numbers. Know, feel comfortable with how you move through those things to make that, uh, uh, to make that work. Um, Man, if you can make something like that, that's awesome. You don't have to show all that stuff usually, but um, this, is the, this is the ideal of what you're talking about. So that somebody comes in, and as they come in, they can go straight. They don't. If you come in at a point like this, you, then you have to make a decision which way you go, and people stop, and other people hit them from behind. Right? You want it to be a nice free flow in. Uh, there's the simple box, so there's my 62. Uh, my 62 for this one is right there. And then I've got another one right there. I have flow through. So I never have anybody backing up or, uh, getting in the way of other parking. Uh, I can easily get, uh, right around and then come back if I need to, to, uh, uh if the parking space is opened up. Um, in this case, I have handicapped spaces over here, uh, right next to the building. So they have direct access without having to cross one of the drive aisles. Um, you always want the handicap spaces to be uh, in a situation where they don't have to cross a drive aisle. Um, something like that is perfect. That's what you're shooting for. And you're not going to be able to do it, right? I mean, it's going to be that, but there's going to be something in the way. You know, there's going to be a tree right there that you have to save or something like that. Well, okay, so then you have to make it a little bigger and you have to go around the tree, whatever it is. Um, but that's the kind of thing that you're trying to think about. When, you, when you're doing a quick sketch line, uh, when you're doing a quick sketch line, that's the thing you're thinking about. Um, one other thing about driveways, let's say this is our uh, our um, site site plan, and I have two streets, a big street and a smaller street, uh, and you find this great spot to be able to put the driveway right there, and it's, say, 20 feet off the corner. Um, that will not work. Um, uh, you always want to move the driveway uh, typically at least 100 or 120 feet, depending uh, on the uh, different codes, um, away from a corner. And the reason for that is people will, from here, will drive and think they're turning down the street, but in fact will be turning into your driveway. They'll stop, they'll back up out into the street uh, and cause an accident. Um, so you don't want to get anything near the corner because it confuses people. Uh, so the driveways will almost always be held back some specific uh, distance. 
Now, one of the things that will always happen uh, when I say that is everybody starts thinking about all the example driveways they can think of that are closer than that uh, to a corner. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of them that uh, don't meet that rule. But that's because like, if you have a 50 foot lot, you can't be 120 feet away from the corner, right? There's a whole bunch of reasons why that doesn't always make, uh, make the case. Or if you're a gas station or a drive through bank or something, there's reasons why that stuff works. Um, but those are typically in situations that are very, very clear uh, what's going on. In something like this, at night, you have a big piece of land and there's a, a fairly large driveway, two-way driveway is 25 feet wide. People will make, mistake that all the time. This is one of those little rules. Um, another rule is um, always be careful about um, uh, the sight triangles. Um, they used to uh, 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 think about sight triangles. I don't know if they still do, um, but it's just sort of a good, uh, good rule. So if I have a driveway coming down uh, to a road, um, the last sort of distance I leave free and clear. Um, I can have a deciduous tree there, but I can't have a con coniferous tree or I can't have a, a sign or something. And that means that somebody who's parked there getting ready to pull out into the street can see oncoming cars. How big is the triangle? Depends on how fast the street is. If, I, if this is a small neighborhood street, the triangle is pretty small. It's probably maybe six, seven feet, something like that. If it's a, a, a very major street with a like arterial, then I maybe have it as something much, much uh, bigger triangle because I need to see cars going 30, 40 miles an hour. Um, another quick thing about driveways, let's say I have a, a, a situation where I'm coming down and there's a tree that I don't want to hit. And so I'm going to uh, come across and I'm going to come out uh, at an angle. Do not have the driveway hit the road at an angle. It always hits perpendicular. Uh, do whatever you can move, maneuver around any tree you want. But um, once you uh, once you get to that moment, um, uh, make sure that uh, uh, that it actually is coming down to the the street in that uh, direct perpendicular way. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you're just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. And that's going to be on April 22nd.